All right, we are going to do a video. Um, I've got my kids. They're watching Paw Patrol, so if you hear Paw Patrol in the background, but uh, got the camera set up, and I've actually got my phone using the remote control app, so I can control this. So if you see me looking down, um, I'm adjusting the camera. Um, anyways, what we've got? This is my stalker stick bow. I uh, love this bow. It's the Apex ILF. It's 60 inches with the limbs that are on it and it's about 43 pounds at my draw length where it's at. Um, I've actually got it posted for sale right now. I'm not super stoked about that, but uh, thinking about just going to a regular recurve versus the ILF. I just don't use the ILF part of it that much. But anyways, what I've got, uh, this is a string from Jack Spinks out of Australia. Uh, we just got this a little while ago and decided I'm gonna get it set up for this bow. Um, even though the bow's posted for sale, I'm still going to set it up. So what I did, I pulled my quiver off. Um, this is just the links from Thunderhorn. I actually have added an extra polar. Let's see, we'll zoom in a little. But there is an actual, it's normally just a five arrow, but I've actually added one here, and it's one that's facing away, so it keeps it away from the rest of my arrows. It's marked kind of weird. This has got a small game head on it. Um, it is what it is is this arrow just doesn't fly as good as the others So I've got it set up with a small game head. Uh, it's got my logo on it anyways, so it's just a strap on where it's got this carbon rod and uh, Keeps it so it stays centered even though it's two-piece I can pull all these arrows out it still stay together It is a strap on and then I will actually show a trick for taking up the extra slack later um, but what I did is so I pulled that Pulled my old string off, and then I used, of course, my stringer. Got my brace height set. I got it set at eight inches right now. That's where the old string was shooting really good. I actually had a jack spink string on here and had it all set up, and it just had like it was like it had got caught shipping or something, and it took out some of these strands. Um, Jack's awesome. Replaced it for me. Uh, it wasn't wasn't his fault, but he took care of me, um, and I I really liked this string. The first one I had on here, I actually, I loved it. So it is wrapped here at the limbs. We'll zoom in a little. You can see it's actually wrapped. Um, and then it does have silencers. These are like rubber cat whiskers. Um, that way you're not absorbing any moisture. It is tied in. This is what he recommended. And I have to say that it was quieter than what I was running. So I just stuck with it. He sends it with a knocking point already tied on. Turns out it's really close to where I need it. Um, I just let him know it was an elevated rest. And he tied it in there. So normally I would tie in my own nail knot. Let me zoom the camera back out here. Uh, normally I would, a little more. I would tie in my own, but since it's really close, we're just gonna try it and see. Uh, if I need to change it, I'll probably cut it and move it because it looks like he's got some glue on there. So I'll just move that. Um, this is just a uh, gun stand. This is actually like a cheap lead sled. And if you stick your handle right there, it's got a groove for stock right there. The front top limb sits in. Makes it pretty easy to work on. Granted, I don't usually work on it in my kitchen, but this way I can see my kids watching TV, keep an eye on them. So anyways, um, what I was going to show is I actually am going to tie in how I do my clickers now, or at least show an idea. I might do it off camera just so I'm not wasting a bunch of time doing it um, on camera. But what I do is I actually take this just guy line, and like I said, this one's already pre-cut. I don't know if it's long enough. That's the other reason I'm just going to kind of show. But what I do is I actually feed it through, and I've took on this clicker, I've took and removed the original clicker, and I've actually put... Uh, tape measure because it is quieter than the original clicker. It's more of a fill than a noise And then I just drilled it out which is not probably the best way, but what I will do is thread this up through and If I can I might have there we go But I'll feed this up through and then what I actually do on this. Let's zoom in again There's my phone going off. Let's leave that. So, zoom in a little more. So what I actually do is I'll actually take, except for I just pushed it in a little too far. I'll actually take and just tie a nail knot to the end of this. I've got this 
hole on this clicker cut to just the right length or just the right size that this slides through so then by the time you tie a nail knot it tightens it up and then what you do is you can adjust where you need it and then trim it right off and that actually keeps this from snapping back against the backing and making a, lar a loud click after the shot and then I just take and I just tie a, just a you know a knot on the end of this that I can slide a little and that way you can fine tune it um, you know you move it up or down and it's going to adjust just it's a fine tune to your clicker to where you want it and then of course I will tie nail knots on both sides of this so it'll you know it won't be moving on its own won't get caught by strings or at least shouldn't move on its own um, too easy it'll still be able to move but it shouldn't just like slide real easy but then uh, you know trim that end off but that's how I set my clicker up. I know a lot of guys will just put it through the string and then pull it through. This is just how I found to do it because what I can do, and this is what I did when I took the string off, the old string off this morning, I just cut the nail knot off the end of this end and then I can pull this back through. So if this string were to get trashed on a hunt, I can cut that nail knot, I can pull this through, pop the string off, put my other string on, and it's set up the exact same way. I slide it through, I retie a nail knot. That way you're not cutting the end of the end of this off. I've seen some guys, they'll melt this and smash it. Well, then if you cut it and you've got this end trimmed, you've now got, you know, your clicker is going to be clicking a little sooner. So with this, you get it set exactly where you want, and then all you got to do is cut that nail knot off and slide it back through. It's just something I figured out messing around myself. I really like that setup. So we're going to zoom back out here. Um, I've got on this, this has got an elevated bear weather rest. I'm going the wrong way here, sorry. I have to work opposite of the camera. Um, this does have a bear weather rest. Now we're going to zoom in. I might just have to pick this up to get the right angle on this. So I don't know if you can see that. We're going to adjust the focus. It actually doesn't have, usually on these, there is a ridge that sits right here on these rests. If you've ever seen one, you'll know what I'm talking about. This one is ground off. Uh, it is actually, I took a razor, cut it off as much as I could, and then I took a Dremel with the sanding tip and actually buffed it smooth because I already had these arrows tuned for shooting off the shelf. And so by the time I added the rest and it had that ridge, it was actually tuning uh, really, it was just, you know, I mean, you're adding that much more versus shooting off the, the rest. So it was just shooting way off, so I actually just sanded it off, buffed it off, and actually got it to tune right about where I wanted it again. And so this is, we've got this, oh, there's your good Kafaru logo. Um, with this ILF, you can adjust here and here, you can adjust your actual limb angle so like if you have a limb that's got a little bit of a tweak to it you could adjust that and then you've actually got the tiller bolts which on this I have it tillered for three under I think it's like a I don't know I think I'm like a quarter inch negative is all it's not very much and then I've got them maxed out to actually get the higher poundage um, I got a baby that's starting to get pissed off in there, so we'll probably cut this one short. I'll get this all tied in, um, and then we'll go shoot it, see if I need to adjust my knocking point, adjust uh, my actual clicker, things like that. So, But we got an angry baby in the other room, so I'm going to go take care of him, and we'll cut this off. I'll get everything tied in, get my quiver put back on, and then probably go shoot it. Um, I'll just show real quick. So what I do on the quiver, we'll zoom in. That baby's getting mad. So you'd actually come over and like put like that to clip around your limb. Then if you take and you just relap this over, you can kind of see, we'll zoom in a little more here. Focusing on the wrong thing. Sorry, running this remotely like I said. Maybe, come on. Fiddle. Maybe we're not gonna get a focus on this here. Sorry, like I said, doing this one handed. There we go. So you can see, there's how you'd strap it over your limb. And then if you take and wrap it right here, it actually takes up that extra slack. Now mine does it pretty good because it's been done so much. But what you can do is you take your 
if you've got an outsert on your arrow, take your fill point on, and then actually push that over that, and it'll seat it really close and tight. After you do it a few times and run it that way, it'll keep up the extra slack, so you don't have like this slack slapping on your limb or your hood um, while you're shooting. Just another one of those things that I came up with that uh, turned out really kind of good and worked well. Like I said, if you take an outsert or just a small socket, push it over there once it's mounted, it'll push it really tight and then after a little while it'll just stay tight like that. You don't have that extra slack slapping around. So anyways, I'm going to go take care of the baby, get this bow set up, um, we'll shoot a couple shots out of it and uh, see how it does. Alright, we got the kid taken care of for now, we think. Um, so I got the clicker string tied in. I was going to show something though, so what I do on this top half, we're going to zoom in a little more here. If that was wrong, maybe the kid is not very happy, but we're going to give her a go and let's see. So you can kind of see how I have it looped. What I do on this side of the string, I actually take and do just one of these deals where you loop it and run both strings back through it. I don't know exactly what that's called. Um, but So I run it through first and then trim this side down, cut it, and then run this side down through the clicker and then tie my nail knot on the back side. Um, I don't have nail knots tied on both sides of this yet, but we'll get it so you can actually see it here. But you can see I've got, there's my loop, it's trimmed down. Like I said I can now slide this up and down to adjust it. I got it kind of close, this is the tail end coming out of that clicker. You can see it poking out, there is actually a nail knot right there. It's just a really small nail knot, I don't even know if you can pick that up from that distance. Looks like you can. So, but that nail knot sits right up against there. And then, like I said, I can adjust that nail knot a little, and then when it's where I want it, I'm gonna cut right against that nail knot and burn this so that it can't slide back out at all. Um, and that, that keeps it set. And then, like I said, my fine-tuned adjustments can be here. But right now, that's pretty close. You know, I've got that little bit of a tail still there, so that way I can shoot it a little. Um, I won't cut everything. I'm going to shoot probably 50 arrows through this bow before I uh, finalize anything, cut anything for sure. Uh, I'll probably shoot about 50 arrows through, make sure everything settles in, stays. Uh, the last string didn't stretch hardly at all. I doubt this one will. I uh, might have to adjust this nail knot. So I was going to show on this. This is the tool I use to check. Uh, Kit's trying to get a little, so we're trying to speed this up. But anyways, it just clicks right here to your string uh, for anyone who hasn't done this. And then you measure right here into the, the groove of your uh, handle there, which it's sitting at just right at 8 inches. And then you just take this up to your rest. Oops, got to flip it. Take this up to your rest. Set this. Well, it's not going to work because we're hitting on the stand right now. And what I can do, one of the reasons I like this rest is I can, if I want, I can adjust the height of this. It's just, like I said, it's just a cheap lead sled um, I bought for sighting and rifles and found it works for some more stuff. Uh, it doesn't work great for working on a bow, but seeing as I already owned it and I don't have to buy something extra, but yeah, we're still hitting. But anyways, you'd clip this right here and then measure uh, measure from your rest to your knocking point. This. I've got it at about 5 eighths of an inch right now, which is uh, what I normally am shooting on these. Uh, we'll see how this string works out and go from there. Uh, I think I talked about everything there. And then like I said, you can just, once you're done, just take the bow. I can set it right here so I can just kind of, oh, I still got that strapped up from where I had it. And I did move this, it did move a little. I had this on my cheap bow. Um, Hey, kid, calm down. There's my kid's camera. I did have this on my cheap bow, so I do have to adjust the height of it a little. But we'll get the quiver on. Get it kind of close. Pop this on. Oh, it would help if I would not knock it off the other side. Anyways, kind of hard to do while I'm trying to film for some reason. I don't know I can do it normally without even trying. There we go. Pop that on, pop this one on, and then we will, there's just a little uh, 
So I will zoom in here real quick. There is just a little nut right here that you can see under my arrows. Let's see. You can kind of see it. There's my kid coming in. But that's just an Allen wrench that you tighten up. You want a candy? Okay, yeah. one sec. There's the one side where it's just tapped on. Now, on this side, you can see where it would normally be hitting, like on your limb, back towards the quiver itself. So by wrapping that back up, just pushing it on, keeps it tight. Like I said, take a socket, an outsert, push that real tight, and that problem is solved after a little while. It just kind of keeps it shaped there. So anyways, there's the bow all set up. Um, just zoom out a little. But I should have, my clicker should be pretty close. All right, there's the click. I don't even know if you'll be able to hear that. Like I said, I've got this swapped over. Uh, it keeps it pretty quiet. So anyways, both we'll set up. We'll shoot probably, I don't know, like I said, 50-ish arrows through this. Make sure, get it tuned really good. And then I'll uh, go ahead and, oh, whoops, sorry, zooming the wrong way. Like I said, I'm operating this camera all from down here, so that's why I keep looking down. Um, but I'll shoot probably 50 arrows through this, recheck everything, recheck my, my brace height, my knock height, recheck my clicker. I'll probably be fine-tuning the clicker, and then I'll trim and burn the clicker end. Um, trim and burn that so it doesn't pull through, and then I'll put my... Um, yeah, okay, I'm not... I wasn't sure if I was at the camera or not. Um, then I'll tie on my nail knots here so that this is kind of held tighter. I mean granted it doesn't move you know like it takes a little effort to move it as it is but once you add those nail knots it's just reassurance and once this gets a little tighter as I adjust it a little more which I uh, trimmed it a little too short this time around I may have to retie it even. So but like I said the bonus of me doing it the way I'm doing it is all I have to do is come in, pull this through, take a, a little razor or scissors, just cut that nail knot just a tiny bit, and that'll pull right back through. So you're never losing length on that string. Um, you know, and, and like I said, I'm just using, uh, what is this, 2.1 guy line or something like that. Cheap, easy to get, easy to make more. And uh, I actually, my nail knots that I make, I actually use old string material. Um, I've just cut sections out of some old strings that have broke or frayed or, or uh, got cut, whatever. I just I just unstrand it and cut strands out. And then this is, I've just got a little loop here. Zoom in a little. This is a, uh, yeah, you can't see it. Anyways, it's just a little loop made out of this down out of the way here so we can actually zoom in. So just a little loop made out of string material and that is what I use to tie my nail knot. If you don't know how to tie a nail knot, uh, Aaron Snyder has a pretty good video. There's a bunch of other videos. It's pretty simple once you figure it out and it's quick and easy but you will need something like this. Just I just use a little loop of this. Um, the only other tools I really use, I've got a Leatherman, I've got just kitchen scissors, lighter, and then like I said you've got your little tool to check your uh, brace height, knock height, everything like that. Zoom back out. This one is a Carbon Express, I believe. Yep, Carbon Express. I, I don't know, I've got two or three different ones. I just really like this one. And then this is, uh, I believe, Selway. Yeah, Selway Stringer. Um, like I said, I've got two different ones, but I like this one. So, anyways, there's uh, everything you need for a trad bow. Pretty simple, pretty easy to set up, especially after you've done it a few times. Uh, tuning is the bigger thing. And then these whiskers he's got on here, they are kind of bunched together. So I go through and kind of break them up a little bit. Just seems like it helps a little. Um, I don't know if it really does. In my head, it seems like it's quieter once they're broke up. But anyways, that's everything. We're going to go shoot it, get it tuned in real good tie everything in solid and uh yeah we'll have the soccer set back up for shooting again like i said it is for sale if anyone's looking for an apex i left it is for sale right now um i love the bow i just don't use the whole ILF side of it i don't want to swap limbs 
So I'm basically looking to just go back to a plain recurve. Uh, I would love to have another stock recurve, but if it doesn't sell for what I'm asking for, it, I will keep it because it is an awesome bow to have. So anyways, thanks for watching and uh, yeah, have a good one.